Hello friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are painting a gloomy winter scene today uh, because this is probably going to be released uh, in January, February. It's being released in February and it's a gloomy time of year, you know? So I've also been painting a lot of like pine tree, like colorful type painting so I thought it would be good to break it up with something that I originally painted a lot of like four years ago on this channel if I'm remembering correctly anyway I have my uh, piece of paper in landscape position I have taped the borders because I want um, a clean edge and I've taken water and I'm gonna start I'm just gonna apply um, the water to like the top third but it's gonna go down in a slant um, and I've tinted it with like this kind of beige color because it's uh, hard to see where I've painted if I'm just using water. Um, and this painting is inspired by Sterling Edwards Artist. Um, that will be in the description as I do with all of my references. Okay. So, this has a slight pink tinge to it, and that is because I was painting Valentine's Day tutorials prior to this one, and it was a lot of red. So, uh, I like how that looks. What we're going to do now is take a smaller brush, just because we don't want it to hold a lot of um, pigment. Um because we want thin brush strokes. Unless you're using a huge piece of paper, then you probably want to use a bigger brush. But we are going to um, like start at the base of our wet part and flick our paintbrush upwards like this. And the goal here is to create these pine tree-like uh, images and it it's supposed to be very faded and I'm gonna take some black watercolor and use a little bit of black in there um, actually let me just switch here to a slightly smaller brush to keep going because it was a bit too thick. Boom, boom. So, that's looking good. We just want it to be super faded, so not like anything crazy here. And I'm just going over that line. I've uh, dipped my brush in some pigment some some of that same color and I'm just going over the base to give it more of a strong feel here like that and what are we gonna do now so <clears throat> uh, we're gonna have like some deciduous tree trunks as our foreground um, so this is kind of, kind of a negative space painting, and I might not be even saying this correctly because I never got any formal art training, so I don't really know the terminology, but we're, we're kind of, we're painting the space around what we want to look, hold on, I need to choose my words better, like, uh, I'll just, when I get to it, I'll, I'll explain it. It's, I, I don't really know how to say it at the moment. <laughs> words, use your words. So I'm going to add some like, I don't even know what you'd call this. Accents. So it's just the same watered down pigment. And I'm just adding some in kind of uneven 
uh, amounts. I'm just like super watering it down. Just like that. Have another little bit there. I like paintings like this because they're very loose and um, it's your brush strokes are supposed to be very effortless and if you do it correctly then your painting looks effortless. Um, I just I like I like painting things like this uh, once in a while just to change things up and uh, kind of get a fresh painting perspective if you will and you don't have to add that if you don't want to like if you have a different vision by all means so now we're going to do what I was talking trying to talk about earlier trying to explain um I want to show snow like I want the the watercolor piece of paper to be snow but what I'm going to do is paint around it to make it look like there's snow. Do you know what I mean? So I'm gonna have a tree stump coming out of here somewhere or maybe a few, but I want snow to kind of mound up to the base of the tree stump. And I don't wanna take gray and like, cause I want the white of the paper to be the snow. So I'm going to paint around it. Let me just do it and then and then hopefully it'll make sense. <clears throat> so I'm grabbing my size eight paintbrush here and um, I'm gonna be using like very camo colors almost. So I'm gonna start with brown that has a little bit of black mixed into it but we can always add more later. And uh, it's going to start here somewhere, I guess, or maybe a little higher. Actually, sorry, before we do that, I'm going to let this completely dry. Okay, so this should be dry now. And I'm just going to start like here, probably somewhere down here. And I'm going to paint the outline of my snow mound. That's basically what I'm trying to paint. I'm going to switch actually to a smaller brush just so I have a bit more control. Um, so my snow mound is going to kind of go like this. Um, I'm going to have some snow going up this tree. Tree is going to be yay thick. And I don't have to be super precise with this because I can always go in with acrylic paint later and adjust. But I like that, something like that. That, that looks good to me. Now I want to really, really darken this. Um, like I want the base of this to be very, very dark. And then it can gradually get lighter as it moves outward. So I'm gonna pick up some green and add that to the mix here. I really like looking at reference pictures and trying to figure out how um, how a artist painted something. It's a lot of fun for me because oftentimes my painting ends up looking completely different than the original painting because I didn't know how they painted it. So I was just kind of experimenting, doing my own thing, and then bada bing, bada boom, the painting was done and it looked unique and different and cool. So for instance, I don't know how this guy, um, I'm assuming it's a guy because the profile picture, is of a man, but uh, I don't know how we did this top part. It's kind of like, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm assuming like the way I would achieve something like that is I would almost dry brush 
some color on. Something like this. Like you angle your brush a little bit horizontally. Now, this is not really as dark as I want it, so I'm gonna go in <sighs> later and fix that a little bit. No, I'm gonna do it now. I am going to fix it now. So, take a little bit of brown. And sorry, I'm doing a lot of brush switching here because it intuitively, like when you paint for with, with one medium for a long time, you kind of intuitively know what brush um, is going to help you achieve what you're trying to a lot easier. So here I'm just trying to kind of fill a larger space. Um, but when you use a larger brush to fill a larger space, it it looks different than using a smaller brush. Like the finished product looks different. Um, and it's probably because of how you angle your, like a larger brush versus a smaller one. But anyway, I'm playing around way too much with that. It's supposed to be effortless and loose and right now I'm trying way too hard. So I'm going to do something similar to that over in the corner here as well. So this is going to also be kind of like a, a grassy patch, if you will. Um, <coughs> and we can have m multiple of these patches. So I'm drying my brush with the color on it and then I'm angling it horizontally to the paper and just doing this stippling motion almost, because I want to create this um, like effortless grassy base that we'll paint on in a moment. So I'm gonna also add um, I want to make it look like there are uh layers to the snow so i'm going to take a little bit of blue it's almost grayish green because of the previous colors on my paintbrush and um i'm gonna have it coming out like this and there will be some over here like a lot of this is just experimentation when it comes to these very loose paintings. Because I really am just going with the flow and trying things out as I'm painting them. Which I realize a lot of people are not a fan of that tutorial style. Most of the time I think I know what I'm doing, but here I'm just trying different things out trying this loose style. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let this dry because I wanna paint my deciduous trees before I add any other details. So let's let that dry. So that should hopefully be dry. We're gonna take black. I'm gonna add brown to mine, but you can use just black because we do want this to stand out. Like these trees that we paint now are going to be what make this painting what it is. So uh, that's a bit too black. I want, I do want some brown in there. I do, but you don't have to have that in your painting. So I've, I've left this white gap here. I think I forgot to say that earlier for the tree, but it's gonna be just this thick trunk that stretches all the way up. Um, 
like so. Um, and I'm gonna just grab my thicker brush to fill this in. So if you are a regular viewer of mine, in a previous tutorial, I was chatting about getting like this um, wall behind our wood stove done with fake brick. Uh, and I was like, oh, I really want this to be done soon, but the contractor isn't getting back to us. So the contractor still hasn't gotten back to us at the time of recording this video. <laughs> I assume that by the time you see this, it will be finished because I'm pre-filming for a couple months from now. But um, he still hasn't gone back to us, but I get it. He's really good at what he does and he's very busy. It's just frustrating when you're told that you will get a quote at a certain time and then you don't receive it. It is what it is. Uh, my husband found um, another contractor through a friend uh, and he came the same day to take a look at the job, that which was yesterday, and um, they already gave us a rough quote. They're just, and, and the other thing is, uh, part of the base, like the brickwork, that is on the floor because when you have a wood stove it has to be certified and whatnot um part of the brickwork was unfinished but the tile that they used was like this really old tile from the 70s that they don't you can't really find it in stores or at least my very poor effort job of trying to find it uh warranted no results so, um, but he said that he has some tile guy and that he very well might be able to find something extremely similar and then cut it to size. So like really, it was a good, a good find that guy. Um, so he said that he can have it done within the next week. So I am very happy about that. Um, I really wanted my mom to see it because she's visiting us tomorrow, like starting tomorrow for a few days. But she'll just have to wait until the summer because that's when she'll be here next, probably. Um, Sorry, so I didn't really talk about what I was doing here. I'm just adding trees. <laughs> that is what I am doing. Um, and this part here, this is where I'm going to paint my snow. So... I'm trying to... Like, I'm going to use acrylic paint and just paint over that. Um, or not. We'll see how this turns out. No, I'm probably going to have to to cover up that green and go up here a little bit. Um, but we just want a lot of, like, sticky objects coming out here. So I'm going to... Switch. Uh, you know what? No, I wanted to darken this part first. Remember I said I was going to do that and then I didn't because I got distracted with my monologue. But okay, let's just darken this area. I really want to darken that area because I want this to be like I want the, the dramatic features to be dramatic. So Let me 
just darken this like that. And then I'm kind of dry brushing it out. Mostly because I already painted trees. And I don't want them to kind of like bleed into the into this thing. So that's a little bit better. I hope you guys agree. But what I'm going to do is just ruin my watercolor brush by stippling. Like, okay, I shouldn't have done it there. But I just want some uh, like random stippling features sticking out. I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to look effortless. And this is, it's kind of hard to make it look that way when you're trying so hard. Um, but now, because I made that wet again, I have to wait for that to dry. So while I'm doing, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to do like some of the trees that I want to put here. So once again, I'm grabbing my black brown combo and I'm going to paint another tree. So here I'm using my double zero brush for this. Um, and we want it to look very jaggedy. So don't try so hard to paint like a straight stick. Just kind of let your brush wander and go where it wants to. Even if there are gaps or whatnot, like let, let your brush just wander and kind of like pretend that you have like a shaky hand and um, and paint that way. And don't do what I'm doing, which is like, I don't want it to go out horizontally so much. I do want it to stay fairly straight, fairly vertical, I mean. So I want all my branches and going upwards because I want the focus like, I want you to be able to see these details here that I painted. I'm going to just switch to my double zero for these ultra fine branches. So if you watched, I always have to be careful when I say this because I don't always upload in the same order that I film. But I'm assuming this tutorial is going to be released after Valentine's Day. Uh, and because the reason I say that is because I was painting Valentine's Day tutorials earlier today. Today is Friday. And I was doing so while home alone, well, with my baby, because uh, my husband was at work, but I was really like chancing it because she was asleep and she could wake up at any moment. But I felt, I was like, I need to do something with my time. Typically I paint these on the weekend when my husband can watch my daughter. And anyway, needless to say, I managed to paint three out of the four tutorials that I wanted to paint. I could have painted the fourth even, which is this one, um, but it had been a while since I fed my daughter and so I, I wanted to wake her up so that I could feed her because I don't want her to get her day and night confused and everybody has their own, every mother has their own way of doing things so if that's not how you do things with your kids, like keep it to yourself because <laughs> we all got our own thing. Um, but, uh, my husband came home from work and I am just finishing the last one now without stress. And he's also making dinner while wearing the baby. So life is good. Life is good at the moment. I am a happy chap. Um, now, okay, I do want to darken this. So you can see that I've just basically been painting as fine branches as I possibly can. 
because we want this to be a very loose style. So we'll just have some random like sticks and whatnot sticking out from these bushes or whatever these are. I love December. I used to really not enjoy Christmas, actually. Like, I enjoyed Christmas itself as a kid because you get gifts, <laughs> right? Like, what? Most kids, that's that's the highlight. Um, but it was kind of a... I didn't, I didn't like it as much as I do now. I really enjoy it now. Like, I get into the spirit. Maybe it's because I have my own house and I can decorate how I want and really make it cozy. Not that I wasn't able to do that before, but like what 12 year old cares about, you know, picking pine cones and making a garland. Um, I, get, I just wasn't into homemaking at that age, obviously. Uh, whereas now I have my own home and I take pride in making it look nice and cozy and a lot of fun, I believe. Um, yeah, and just whenever we do like little reno projects, like the wood stove, the wall behind the stove, it's it just kind of it freshens up the house. It's something fun to look forward to to make things cozy. Um, so it's exciting. It's like something to look forward to. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, at this point, I've kind of stopped saying what I'm doing because I just make it up as I go. Um, you're just trying to make these thin sticks, paint these thin sticks, um, wherever you would like, wherever it looks nice to you. Um, I'm doing like shorter ones coming out of this, whatever this is. Uh... And then I do want to paint some coming out of here. I should paint more of these like really moody, loose um, paintings. I do enjoy them quite a bit. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take um, a little bit of red and add brown to it or black. And I'm going to add it to just the tips of some of these um, branches as little leaves. And I'm just angling. So I'm using my quadruple zero brush here and I'm angling my brush horizontally against the paper and just kind of smacking on random shapes like that. You don't want to overdo it though, like just do it on a few. Unless you want to do it on more. It's your painting. You do you. So, um, I'm not quite finished with this yet. Uh, I do now want to take a little bit of uh, white acrylic paint. And what I'm going to do is kind of touch up the tree so I want to have it look like there's snow coming around this tree and then I don't want it to be super smooth Um, now 
one thinking I should have just left it. I do want some also to come around this guy. And I, because I'm using acrylic paint and you can't really paint watercolor on top of acrylic paint, I am trying to be mindful where I put this snow. I am going to add some on top of the uh, deciduous branches here. And depending on how dark you painted that background, it'll either stand out a lot or not very much. But it's a lot of fun, in my opinion, to add little snowy details on top of branches. And you don't have to add them everywhere because that would take a very long time. So I just choose to add them on kind of the thickest branches and in corners where snow would naturally accumulate and gather. Like, sort of like that. <coughs> and then the last thing that I want to, well, I don't know if it's going to be the last thing, but... Um, I do want to take some of that blue again and kind of add, why is it so green? This happens to me way too often. Add some gray in there and kind of have like these snowy highlights, if you will. So I keep dipping my paintbrush into water just so that I can kind of smooth out some of that snowy shadow that I painted on. Uh, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. No, I'm not. I'm not going to leave it at that. I want to add taking my quadruple zero here and I want to add some snow like outline some of these on this darker area because I love the look of snowy highlights And if this is released in February, then we only have like a month or two months maybe left of, of snowy painting excuses. I'm going to add some little tiny dots as well. What that's supposed to be, I don't know. Maybe it'll just make it look a little more mystical. I'll do some here as well. Okay. So I quite like how this turned out. Peel the tape off. Nice and clean borders. Let me know what you guys think of this painting. It's quite effortless when you break it down. I hope that you agree. So let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.